Hi everyone, how are you today? I hope everyone is well. Today is our eighth lesson and I'm going to discuss to you about the utilization of assessment data. Different forms of assessment are administered as to, so as to collect data about the learning of students. In making decisions, test results can help improve the curriculum and instruction. For the students and parents, test score interpretations are important. So score are the results of test, and this may be in the form of row scores and percentage scores, percentile rank, Z scores, stanines, T scores, or level, category, or proficiency, so these are the type of test score, raw score, percentage score, percentile rank, and standard score. Raw score and percentage percent correct score. Total number of score points a test taker obtains by answering questions correctly on a test. Correct score percent represents the percentage of questions a test taker answered correctly on a test and adjusted raw score to account for differences in the lengths of different tests present correct score is easy to calculate and understand and is often used in classroom tests for score reporting. Why are present, present correct scores not used as the primary scores? Most standardized testing programs require scores that can be compared across different forms. In order for different stakeholders, such as state, schools, and others, to make consistent and fair decisions based on assessment results, the scores reported from standardized tests need to be comparable. That is, score must carry the same meaning regardless of which form was administered. Simply put, scores in different forms of a test should indicate the same level of performance, no matter which form the test taker received. Most standardized testing programs do not use percent correct scores as the primary scales for reporting assessment results because such scores are not comparable across forms. So scale scores to form A and form B. Row scores, scale scores. In some cases, however, person correct scores are used as auxiliary scores as a way of providing scores user with additional information to assess in understanding the performance. In such cases, the professional guidelines used as ETs and in the testing industry as a whole, typically call and testing program to state the limitations of percent scores and provide guidelines as to the appropriate use of the test scores. So as illustrated in table one, form A is the more difficult uh, form to achieve the same stated score of 195. A test taker needs to answer 96 out of the 100 questions correctly on form A, but needs to answer 97 questions correctly on form B. So this is the table one, shows an example of scale scores associated with different raw scores for two different forms. In this hypothetical example, form A is the more difficult as I, I said. Explained. Percentile rank. 
What is percentile rank? It provides the percent of scores that are at below a raw or standard score. To rank the students in a reference sample, the percentile rank is utilized. We should not be confused with the percentage of correct answers. For instance, a score of 40 or a standard score of one falls in the 8th percentile, which means that the student scored as well as better than 80% of the students in the sample group. Another way of interpreting this is the said student score is in the upper 20% of the norm group. So if the number of students who took the test is 200, a percentile rank of 80 indicates that they scored higher than 160 students. So percentile ranks do not represent equal units and so they should not be subjected to arithmetic operations. Example, the percent of cases that are at or below a score, but we only count half of the cases that are at the score. So if you can see here, the percentile rank for B, for B, 77 degree a percent, in, in a recent test, 12% got D and 50% got C, 30% got B and 80% got A. Um, standard score. Standard score obtained from raw scores using the norming information gathered when the test is developed. So a positive um, Z value means it is above the average while a negative, negative Z score means um, below the average. So in 50 item science test, where the mean is 25 and the standard deviation is 10, the score of 35 has the Z score of one. It means that it is one standard deviation above the mean. Therefore, the score of the students belongs to the upper 50% of the norm group. What are the Z scores? A Z, Z scores measure, measures exactly how many standards deviations above or below the mean a data point is. Here's the formula of calculating a z-score. Uh, our z is equal to data point minus mean, then over standard deviation. So here's the formula written with, with symbols. Here are some important facts about z-scores. A positive z-score says the data point is above average. A negative z-score says the data point is below average. A z-score close to 0, 0 says the data point is close to average. A data point can be considered unusual if its z-score is above 3 or negative 3 below. What about the standard scores in stanines? A method of scaling scores on a nine point scale. Stanine is a short for standard time. Nine, it is a method wherein the raw score is converted to a whole number from one, which is the lowest, and nine is the highest. So stanine scores of one, two, and three below average. Standing scores of four, five, and six average. Standing course scores of seven, eight, nine is above average. So here's how to calculate standings. T scores. T scores refers to standard score with a mean equal to 50 and standard deviation equal to 10. Two students get scores 
24 and 32 respectively, and the mean and standard deviation of the obtained scores are 20.0 and 4.0 respectively. How many standard deviation units that the scores 24 and 32 fall from the mean score? So the answer is one and three respectively. 32 is virtually above the all the scores on the test. Development scores. The grade equivalent is an estimate of student loca uh, location in the development of continuum and not the grade level where he should be placed. So that was that, that, that what we call um, equivalent. They are similarly interpreted. For example, um, if, if pupil score is equal to an age equivalent of 7.6, this means that the pupil's raw score is equal to the average score of children seven years and six months in the norm group who took the test. Development scores like age and grade equivalents promote similar thinking, categorizing performance and abilities by grade or age without due consideration to variations. Type of test interpretations. Norm referenced interpretations. So norm referenced interpretation refer to the explanation of students' performance in comparison with the students of the same grade or age. Um, students' knowledge is measured um, for with uh, the students' knowledge is measured in terms of position in the group, in the norm group. The utilization of standard scores and percentile rank are common. Um, and um, in a norm reference interpretations, good examples are the following. A pupil is placed eighth in the math class. A pupil score in a math assessment at the 85th percentile, the child scored better than 85th of the student in a group. Norm reference evaluation identify the place or rank of a learner according to the same source assessment instruments under these are the following. Teacher made survey test, standard aptitude and achievement test, adjustment inventories, type of test interpretation, one of it is criterion reference interpretation. The term criterion came from the word criterion. The following generates a, a pupil is placed in a math class, a pupil score in math assessment at the 85 percentile. The, the child scored better than 85th of the students in the group. Norm reference evaluation identify the place of rank of a learner. According to the same source, assessment instruments under this are the following. Teacher made service test, standardized aptitude and achievement tests, adjustment inventories. In, in diagnosing the, the needs of students and monitoring their progress, criterion referencing is utilized. Likewise, it is used in criterion and evaluation of the program. It is preferred assessment mode in an outcome-based education framework. Criterion of France interpretation retrieved on October 18, 2018, enumerated the advantages of criterion reference grading systems, and these are the following. First, it is an ideal system to utilize in collaborative group work. Number two, students are free to collaborate with the instructor and with one another. Number three, a rich learning environment is to the advantage of everyone. Number four, students are rewarded for finding, finding ways to assist, assist each other. Number five, students are able to compete with their own previous performance rather than 
with other students. Number six, grades of students are based on their own performance rather than be associated with peers' performance. Number seven, for a given outcome, students have a definite and clear understanding of the standard required. Number eight, students are able to exercise greater choice and judgment in the outcome level they target. Number nine, outcomes of students are based on demonstrated competence rather than are arbitrary and temporarily conflicting standards. Thank you, that's, our, that's all for today. And for the next week, uh, we will have our ninth lesson. I'm so excited to have a lesson again next week. Goodbye, everyone. Be safe. Thank you for listening. Have a nice day. Ciao.